Assume for a moment that you could only have one knife for the rest of your life. What would it be? How's it going, everybody? I'm Roll Shambo, the connoisseur and collector of all things sharp and shiny. And if you could hop on down to the comment section and let me know what that knife would be. While you're down there, make sure you fist bump that like button, but not too harshly. Today, we're talking about this guy. This is the QSP Rhino, and it's glitzy and it's glamorous. And it found its way into my possession via the Apex Passround Group and QSP. Shout out to both of those. I definitely appreciate it. Now, while our time with this knife might be short, it will be thorough, and we're gonna talk about whether or not they hit all the cues. Is it worth the price tag? Today, we're gonna find out. This is the QSP Rhino. Let's get into it. So this is the QSP Rhino. And yeah, we're hopping right into it. No unboxing on this one. Nothing special to talk about there. And let's be honest, the most interesting thing about this knife is far and away not the package it came in. Now that we've gotten that out of the way, um, I've been looking forward to looking at this knife for a while now. And this is a knife that came to me by way of the Apex Pass Round Group, uh, due in large part to QSP for making this possible and sending it to the Pass Round Group. So thank you again to QSP for doing that. Because without that, I don't know if I would have the chance to look at this knife. And I really wanted to. I really wanted to because I love knives that ha are unique or have unique features that try new things or add new materials. And listen, you're going to notice right away that this has some Mokitai hardware. Uh, it's got Mokitai backspacer, Mokitai pocket clip. It's got titanium handle scales. M390 on the blade and this wicked clip point design. I'm going to call this a clip point. I'm not going to call it a drop point. I'm also a huge fan of fullers that you can flick with. And listen, I'm not about fidget factor in spite of quality performance on a knife, but when it's got great fidget factor and it's a great quality knife, I mean, what's not to love, right? So naturally, this is one that I had to check out. Now, this is not a cheap knife. Uh, we are looking at about the $300 price range. Um, but again, you get titanium, M390, and Mokitai hardware. Listen, and that's important because that Mokitai is not something that you typically find on factory knives, even in the $300 price range. I mean, usually you have to pay extra for this kind of action. And so it is nice to see like little spots of color on an otherwise not too crazy looking knife. Uh, but then you start to notice the craziness come in here. Uh, you know how I'm always complaining about not having enough jimping? Well, there you go. That's all the jimping, all this, all the spots that you could possibly put your thumb. There is jimping there. Now it's this spiral pattern. Okay. And I don't know if that's supposed to be representational of like a rhino horn, or maybe they decided that, you know what, that could be a, like a ram horn spiral type thing going on. Uh, but then they continued it to the backspacer. And I think that that looks really, really cool. I haven't seen any other knives with this style of jimping, this spiral pattern. If you know of any, let me know in the comment section down below because I looked, I couldn't find them, okay? And I I, I did a cursory amount of Google searching. Uh, it's really easy to get lost in the weeds when you do the Googles. Anyways, this knife is, on the outset it looks normal, but the, digger, the deeper you dig, the more unique it becomes. So let's talk first and foremost about the rhino in the room. Uh, this jimping. Now, this jimping is weird because while it looks great, I don't actually think that it necessarily performs very well. And the reason is, is because it causes motion at a 
downward slant. So if you're not careful, it'll actually guide your thumb right off the spine of the blade. Um, but it is something that you can get used to. You kind of have to plant your thumb and pull back a little bit. You do that and you're nice and locked in. But if you just place your thumb there, it could actually cause some motion down the side of the blade. Now, if you don't really choke up like that, um, or if you don't really pay attention to saber grips anyways, or that's not how you'd use this knife or hold this knife, then yeah, I, I wouldn't suggest or think that that would be an issue. And really it is kind of a nitpick. Um, I really enjoy how that spiral pattern goes all the way down to the backspacer as well. And the fact that that backspacer is also mocha tie and matches the pocket clip is perfect. Um, I do kind of wish that they had anodized the screws to match or at least make them purple. I think that that would have really completed the ensemble that we have going on here, but they didn't. And that's okay. You know, I'm not going to cry about it. It's just something that I think would have looked pretty dang cool. Uh, these titanium handle scales feel really well polished. The knife is actually comfortable in my hands and I have average sized hands for a man. Uh, part of the reason why it feels comfortable is that you have this nice chamfering here. All the edges are knocked down. This is a very premium feeling QSP knife. And if you're not familiar with QSP, QSP has been killing it with quality manufacturing. And yes, they are from China. For some people, the country of origin on this is going to be a deal breaker. But I think that for most, most people have come to grips with the fact that China is absolutely crushing us when it comes to manufacturing quality knives. I hope that that changes at some point, but for now, it's just a fact that we have to be comfortable with. Uh, and look at this. You get the contouring on both sides of that lock bar. You get the contouring at the back of the handle scales, and that just leads to a really, really comfortable grip. The pocket clip is milled out of mocha tie, as I've mentioned at least three times now, and it's a ball bearing style clip. Going in and out of the pocket is super easy, and it's also not going to tear up your, your pants material on your pocket, which is phenomenal. Uh, it, the ironic thing here is, is that there have been several knives with this ball bearing clip design uh, that have come out from different companies recently, and a lot of them actually don't work well. I'm happy to report that this one does. So yeah, that's good. It is a single sided captive pivot running on ceramic bearings, and it feels really, really glassy and really smooth. The detent is a nicely tuned detent. You know, like it doesn't take a whole lot to get this to snap out. Can you fail it? Sure, you can fail it. Um, it's harder to fail with the flipper tab. You can if you press really lightly, you can fail it. But any amount of normal pressure and, you know, it, it flies out no problem. You can push button it, you can light switch it. Both work very well. Light switch, of course, is going to fly out with a little bit more force. And then, of course, if you're like me, I personally love fullers for flicking. I'm a fuller flicker, spidey flicker, whatever. Um, the blade features this beautiful multi-directional satin finish. So on the flats, it's going horizontally. And then, of course, on the blade, it's going vertically. And that just looks great. Personally, I think that this blade shape is gorgeous. Uh, I would have really, really loved to have seen a more affordable, more attainable version of this knife. I mean, I would have been okay with G10 handle scales or aluminum handle scales and say like 14 C28N. Make this design with this style of jimping, uh, this style of backspacer, maybe change the pocket clip and make it $80. That knife would sell like hotcakes. As it stands, this one still sells pretty well. Uh, with the first initial releases, they all sold out. Now you can get this in different finishes as well. You can get it in a purple finish, which honestly would be my choice. I think the purple really pops. Uh, you can get it in a plain finish or in a black finish. Uh, there's a lot of different variations. And if you're interested in this knife, I will make sure to link it down below. So check there for availability. I have no idea uh, when you'll be watching this video in relation to when it's being recorded. And so it may or may not be in stock. 
If it's not in stock, I'm not surprised that these have sold out multiple times. And aside from the weirdness that has to do with the jimping, which I'm okay with to get something different, um, I don't really have any complaints about this knife. It feels really well put together. Now you might be wondering, well, I mean, dude, you haven't talked about any specs. So let's go ahead and do that. This is Jenny Craig, AKA the scale of truth. Jenny does not lie. Let's see how much this knife weighs. Coming in at 4.3 ounces. Now I have been known to carry really heavy knives. So that's not necessarily heavy to me, but for someone, if for example, you're used to carrying knives that weigh, you know, two and a half ounces, three ounces, this would feel on the heavier side. For me, I think that it's adequate in its weight. I don't feel like it's too heavy. In fact, it could have been a lot heavier. If you look on the inside, they did do some internal milling on both sides of the handle scales. So both on the lock side and on the show side. And so they did what they could to bring the weight down. But when you have, you know, full titanium construction with a wide blade, M390, Mokotai clip and backspacer, yeah, it's gonna add on to the weight a bit. Uh, that's just kind of the price that you pay. Uh, a quick suggestion for all of you out there who are looking at that like, oh, I don't really carry anything over four ounces. Uh, carry a knife that weighs what's in your opinion heavy for about two or three days. You'll notice that you get used to it really, really quickly because what used to feel heavy to you is becomes natural. It becomes easy to adapt to. Humans adapt to their situations. It's what we do. It's what you know, has made us a dominant species on this planet. And so when people tell me, oh, I can't carry a knife over four ounces, I like cry me a river, carry one for a couple days and come back. Um, most of the time, all of a sudden it's no longer an issue because you just get used to it. A three ounce knife is not going to pull your pants down any less than a four ounce knife. I said it, I'm sticking with it. Let me know in the comments section if you disagree. I'm open for discussion. Uh, ultimately, I do like this knife. I do have one other gripe, and it's a minor one. At this price point, we deserve a lock bar that is chamfered. This is not, it's squared off. And while the squared off edge on that lock bar is, you know, it's, it's rounded to a, a slight extent, it does become a tiny bit uncomfortable after a while of opening and closing. Um, if you've got calluses on your thumbs already, then, you know, it's probably not a big deal. It's not like a, a strider lock bar where, you know, you have to earn that disengage it, it, but it is something that could have been a lot more comfortable. And especially when we start looking at the work they went to, to make the handle scales themselves comfortable, it makes me wonder why we didn't go the extra step to chamfer out the inside of that lock bar to make engagement and disengagement that much more comfortable. I mean, we could have done that. You know, we did the milling out everywhere else. We could have done a tiny bit of chamfering there on the lock bar, and that would have really, really fit well with this knife. Um, but then again, maybe they used up all their ideas on the backspacer and the spine of the blade. Uh, essentially, they took a crown spine and they stylized the jimping. And, I, I, it's hard for me to get past that because I haven't seen any other knives with that style, but it is something that I really very much enjoy. Ultimately, I think that there are a lot of knives in this price range that aren't as good as this knife. It looks premium. It feels premium. If you're a materials nerd, it gives you an opportunity to get some mocha tie without buying aftermarket parts. And that's nice. If you've been searching for Mokotai, this is your opportunity because this guy is here and it works really good. It looks really, really good. There is absolutely no complaints from me. I love the use of that material there and I love seeing it. Uh, the body screws and the pivot screws are all T8 as well as the screws on the pocket clip. That's fantastic. And there's not a whole lot of them. You have two body screws on each side. Um, on the show side, rather, you have two body screws. On the clip side, you have one body screw, two clip screws, and then of course, the pivot screw. 
and the lock bar uh, screw, which holds in that steel lock bar interface, which it does have, uh, that's also a T8, and that's really good to see. So they didn't drop the ball on the hardware at all. All of that is good. The action is good. The materials are good. The price is high, uh, but considering the uniqueness of the materials used and the uniqueness of the design, I'm not necessarily super angry about it. Lastly, if you like this, you have two different grinds to choose from. This is the flat grind, and this is going to be the less expensive one. Uh, this one's gonna be going for, for around 300 bucks. They do make one with a compound grind where it's a, sh a hollow to a flat grind at the tip. Uh, that one's going to be more expensive by about 50 or 60 bucks, I believe. Again, I'll leave links in the channel description and in the pinned comment below in case you wanna check one out. If you do, it helps the channel. If you don't, it's no big deal. That is entirely up to you. Uh, that being said, my personal opinion, having handled this one, is if I were to buy one, I don't think I'd spend the extra money on the compound grind. I think I'd be A-OK -okay with just the flat grind. I think the flat grind is going to do it for me. And if I were to buy one, that is the one I would buy. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments section down below. Uh, have you seen this knife before? Are you interested in this knife? Are you going to pick one up or is this a hard pass for you? Let's have a discussion. Don't forget, if you liked the video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, boohoo, there's a button for you too. And if you wanna see more knife content just like this, make sure you hit subscribe and smash that notification bell. I'm Roll Shambo. I'll catch you on the flip side.